would like to welcome you to bemorenews.com. Delegate Dan Morheim, final day of the Maryland General Assembly session. Last Friday, the decriminalization of marijuana became a hot issue in Annapolis, or all around Annapolis, to talk of the town. What happened? Well, that bill, which is decriminalization of a very small amount of uh, marijuana, uh, something where there's a significant racial disparity and young people get a record and then it haunts them the rest of their life, that bill was deemed to be dead from the, from the beginning of the legislative session. Uh, amazingly enough, thanks to the work of a, quite a few legislators, especially Delegate Nat Oaks, uh, Senator Bobby Zirkin, uh, and a number of other people, uh, that came around. But the Senate had passed the bill, so the real heavy lifting had to be done in the House of Delegates and Delegate Oaks and a number of others were absolutely instrumental and in how they did it, I'm not sure, but that was an amazing legislative lift. Uh, no one expected it to happen, but they made it happen. And then the bill passed. And then the bill passed. And, and you said no one would ever know? The world is about to know. It's about to be on BeMoreNews.com. Delegate Oaks, 41st District. Thank you. Thank you, Dan Mohan, for those kind words. The bill, the, the legislation was dead? The bill was not only dead, they changed the bill into a uh, task force and they're going to have a recommendation uh, that was going to come back two years hence. And we didn't think we need any more task force, any more studies. We thought that now was the time. And um, the Senator Zirkin got in touch with myself uh, along with Senator Kiefer Mitchell. Uh, we came up with a strategy. I got the Black Caucus involved. The leadership of the caucus agreed with me. Delegate Mitchell. Delegate uh, Mitchell, yes. Uh, we, got, we got the leadership involved in the Black Caucus. Uh, they followed us, uh, followed my lead. And since I brought it to their attention, they said, okay, you like it so much, you're going to have to carry it. And uh, we did. And uh, we went in, we met with the chairman of the committee. We alerted him that we thought it would be an ugly uh, floor battle if we were to continue on the route we was going. But if he would reconsider and let the people make the choice on the floor, which we sent down in Annapolis to do, uh, we end up uh, doing just that. What's, what's the impact here? The impact is we went from, from criminal to civil. And what that means is that you have a young kid who, uh, high school or something like that, uh, up to age 21, uh, get caught with uh, what one might call a joint or 10 grams or less. Then we made that a civil offense. How much is 10 grams? Is that a bag? No, that's more like a little lid. Uh, you, but you might understand you from the street, so uh, I, I don't mind using the terminology <laughs> that I know you're quite familiar with. However, now I'm not saying that you're used, I'm just saying you utilize it. You know to about God it. be the glory, yeah, delegate. You know about it because of your I'm from PhD, Baltimore. I'm your PhD from, in street yes, politics yeah. and, and, and getting around. You don't survive and get to have, start a station of Be More News and survive for 15 years and not understand what goes on in the street. But back to the serious issue of uh, a civil citation for two offense. Uh, we'll get them a $100 fine, a $250 fine. And then when we get to the third offense, we're not saying we'll just keep playing with them. We say third offense, something is wrong. We think you need to look at something other than just trying to give a civil. So that turns into more of a criminal with a judge have the right to now refer you to folk to make sure you got your little problem in, in under control. So uh, I think it was a significant, significant piece because those same ones that got those cit citations would have had a criminal record and would not been able to get would not been able to get school loans, would not even be able to get a job, and then we actually just summarily submit them to the street to survive off the street and that's not what we necessarily want to do. Thank you. Okay. One other point to echo what Delegate Oak said, because there's actually a study on that subject that I dug out. And in California in 2011, they essentially uh, did this, and they found that the crime rate among juveniles plummeted, not just because they took a thing that was a crime and made it a civil offense. Homicides, armed robbery, breaking and entry, all these other crimes dropped uh, dramatically. And that, that's a real study, so it's not just an opinion or conjecture. Uh, it actually is borne out by uh, the facts. So that's important. Uh, one of the reasons to do this was, of course, not to give young people a record that haunts them for the rest of their life, but it actually makes uh, a, a difference. It's, um, you know, and that, that's really an important part of this. Do you want to add, Delia? Well, yeah, I think very significant, especially coming from Baltimore City, the inner part of uh, the state. Uh, I thought it was very, very important that we realize that white kids and black kids smoke marijuana at the same rate. 
The only difference is 83% of those coming in contact with the criminal with the with the judiciary system, they get locked up. 17% of the white get locked up. All we did at this point is try to level the playing field. We do not like those kinds of statistics. 17 states I'm glad you said that. 17 states including the District of Columbia already have this in effect. So why should we not take advantage of that? We don't need to study anything anymore when you already got eight, 17 states in District of Columbia who already studied and now they're working it. Let's look at those results and at the same time let us move forward. And so I was very, very, very happy and proud to be a part of that turnaround, if that's what you want to call it. But I think that people just had an opportunity to do what they supposed to do, do the right thing, and they did it. It reminds me, and I'm going to leave with this, it reminds me of a situation with, I think you remember Reverend Wright used to be with NAACP. Reverend Wright said one thing that I remember profoundly. He said, if you see a good John fight. John Wright, wasn't it? Uh, John, Reverend John Wright, he mm -hmm. says, if you see a good fight, Get in it. jump in it. Yeah. And I thought that was a great fight. And guess what? I got in it, and the results were favorable. Thank you very much. Good deal. Keep watching. BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news, where we uncover the truth.